Cecil Global and African Diaspora News Channel presents the Ghana Luxury Property Tour. It will be a eight day tour coming to you starting October 1 through October 8, 2023. Now you enjoy a five-star stay at a hotel, the finest properties in Ghana. You connect with industry professionals. You will also visit cultural landmarks, have a meet and greet with the team and so much more. Make sure that you go to the description box below and hit that link to sign up. At one point or another, we have all considered relocating to an African country, particularly Ghana. I mean, when you log on to social media, particularly during the festive season, you see all these amazing, amazing, amazing videos of people having a blast, having a time of their life in Accra, Ghana. And beyond the festive season, you see videos of people documenting how they are packing their bags, leaving America and relocating to the motherland. And their experience is almost surreal, an out-of-body experience, the way they receive, the way their life changes, the way their mindset and outlook on life changes is just something that you might have at one point considered and maybe are thinking about and saving towards so you can have the same kind of experience either now or in the near future. So if you've ever considered moving to Ghana or just doing a road trip to Ghana, this video is for you. Now, we have seen people moving um, back to Ghana for the last 10 years, and it was really, really made popular by the presidential initi initiative of the year of return that happened in 2019, that so millions of people come back to Ghana, relocate with the motherland, and just have a sort of, a sort of, a sort of reconnection with the ancestry and with where they came from. People were retracing and retracking the roots of the ancestors to have a sense of belonging and to know who they are. So moving to Ghana in 2010 was different. Moving to Ghana in 2015 was different. 2019 was different. And in 2023, the dynamics have really, really, really changed. That is the essence of this video. Think of it as your guide to moving in Ghana in 2023. We will do more videos guiding you on how to do it, but today I just wanted to sort of paint a broad picture of where Ghana is right now. What are some of the things that you need to have at the back of your mind when you're thinking and planning your moving here or just your trip so that when you're ready, when you're ready to visit, you're equipped with all the tips and tools to enable you do that with ease and successfully. First thing you should know is that inflation is at the highest in Ghana. Inflation numbers are at 51%, which is the highest inflation rate that the country has ever experienced in the history of its existence. Now, things changed very first in 2022. I mean, COVID-19 had been there since 2019, 2020, 2021 and also into 2022 and we're continuing to feel the residual effect of the pandemic even in 2023 then came the uh, the russian invasion of ukraine and that changed a lot of things because it slowed down movement of goods movement of essential things like grain wheat fertilizer that are key for the Ghanaian market and also when europe is not in good terms with itself africa suffers you know when the pandemic hit China, which is like the manufacturing um, hub of the world. Countries in Africa suffered and Accra is, Accra Ghana rather, is no exemption. So things have not been going great, but it just spiraled over the last year. In 2021 December, inflation was 12.8%. Over the year 2022, it went to 15, then 18, then 20, then about 33, then went to 41, and now we are at 51. And it's not going to get better anytime soon. It's going to get tougher and tougher. It's going to get harder and harder before it becomes better. But the World Bank and the IMF have, have said, although they keep refuting claims of a possible global recession, they have said that things are going to get tougher before they get better. Now, why is this information necessary for you? If you're moving here, you need to plan with double the amount of money you thought you need. So if you think you will need rent for $1,000, you better plan with about $1,500 or $2,000 because of inflation. When the cost of living goes up, things go up. So whatever a shopping basket of 100 
CDs could buy or a hundred dollars could buy now only fifty dollars can buy that so you need an extra fifty dollars or fifty CDs on top of your budget to be able to buy the same amount of goods now many people do not necessarily know this so you do your budget you do your plan and then when you come inflation keeps hitting you every single month and you find out that the budget that you had planned for it's not sufficient. It cannot cut for everything that you really want. Not to live a luxurious lifestyle, but to live a comfortable lifestyle. So be very careful and know what is happening in the country, particularly with inflation. Study the patterns. Know at what rate inflation continues to increase. Now it's like it goes up by 10% every single month. So... Uh, knowing whatever month you want to visit or you want to relocate, do the math so that whatever money you budget with is enough when you come to Ghana. Number two, rent. This is something that many, many, many people never understand. It's like a shocker. When you come here, it shocks you. Now, if you're, say, from America or from Europe or any other country, most countries pay rent monthly. I am Kenyan, and in Kenya, we pay one month um, rent and then a month deposit. And during your last month of tenancy, you will live on your deposit and you'll not pay rent or the deposit will be used to cover for any damages that happen to the house when you're moving. It doesn't work like that in Ghana. How it works here is we pay rent every single year, and that's if you have a good landlord. If your landlord is a typical landlord, you'll have to pay two years up front. The other thing that you need to know is if you need to live in a decent neighborhood, it will cost you a little bit more, almost the same amount as you're paying in America or like in the UK or Canada because um, decent apartments in prime locations go for $2,000 or $3,000. In mid-suburban areas, then you might pay anywhere between $500 to $1,000. It all depends on the area that you want to stay, but know that you have to pay rent annually or two years. So if you're planning to um, move here or maybe do like um, a long stay like three months there are places that will take three months but they'll charge you through the nose but if you're planning to relocate then you need to know that you'll pay your rent a year or two years up front the other thing that you need to know is that when they sniff an accent when they figure out that you're a foreigner the price is likely to go slightly higher and we take our rent here in dollars particularly for high-end apartments or just meets above an apartment rent is checked in dollars so if somebody says five hundred dollars a month then in a year that's six thousand dollars in two years that's twelve thousand dollars they expect you to pay them twelve thousand dollars up front i hope my math is right when somebody says it's a thousand dollars then it's twelve thousand dollars a month a year and it's twenty four thousand dollars for two years and they will expect the amount up front so if you're planning to move you will need um, maybe $24,000 in rent for the two years because that is just how it works in most places. Also, it's very important to know that there are landlords right now that are beginning to take three months rent or six months rent depending on the agreement that you have with them. I will put this caution out there. Do not book a house that you have not seen because you're bound to get surprised and most of the time, disappointed at the house that you'll get when you get here get an airbnb live in the airbnb for a week or two and look out at the options that you have then settle on one house number three which also is related to number four but let's talk about money how are you going to make an income when you're in ghana one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they are relocating or moving to ghana is they quit their jobs please 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 do not make this mistake Talk to your employers if you can do remote work or hybrid model. It is safer that way, particularly if you're in fields that can allow for remote work, I mean tech, communication, please find a way of keeping your job because when you come here, everything is about money, particularly when you're trying to settle in. Money, 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 money. You're paying for immigration. You're paying for movement. You're paying for your house. You've already paid a huge chunk for two years. Then you've paid for your car. And then what? If money is not coming in every single month or every single day, you're bound to go broke in Ghana. Now, foreigners have a very hard time adapting into the workforce and work environment in Ghana because salaries are not as competitive as 
as compared to where you're from. Depending on the industry that you worked in, you get paid between what? $4 to 13 15 20 $30 an hour, depending on what industry you're in. Here, salaries are very, very low unless you get a job and you're hired as an expert on expert terms salaries the median salary here is about hundred and twenty dollars so imagine you're doing a job where you're being paid three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a month and that's premium if you're being paid five hundred dollars a thousand dollars like you're in senior management that's when you make that kind of money so it's not easy to come about companies that will pay you the amount of money that you can live a comfortable life or almost the life that you're living back at home because you don't want to trade a good life at home to come and struggle um, here. So if you can keep your job, but if you do not keep your job, figure out how you're going to be making money. You cannot depend on your savings when you move to Accra, Ghana, because contrary to popular belief, it's an expensive city to live in. It's one of the most expensive cities to live in across Africa, if not the world. So I need you guys to also work with that mentality that you will need a constant flow of income. People always think, oh, but I'm going to Africa. It will be flowers and rain and sunshine and all that stuff. No, <laughs> the flowers are very thorny. So you need to figure out how you are going to survive. Failure to which in a year or two, you'll exhaust all your money. You'll pack your bags and you'll have to go back to America or the UK to start afresh. Last but not least, Ghana is a debit society. Cash is king. You're coming from a place where you guys are big on credit. You get your house on credit. You get your phone on credit. You get your car on credit. It doesn't work like that here. If um, you want to buy a house and they say it's $130,000 or $150,000, you pay cash upfront. And even organizations or or like real, real estate developers that have that um, plan mortgages, it's not feasible to take a mortgage here because the interest rates are really high. Just general interest rates in Ghana are about 26%. And they will not give you for a longer period of time. They'll not tell you... Um, you have to pay over the next 20 or 30 years. They want their money back in seven, eight, max, 15 years. So it does not necessarily make fiscal sense to go the mortgage way. And if you take loans, the interest rates are going to choke you. So say you want a house, right? You pay for the house, 130000 150000 or maybe you just get an apartment, 60000 Then you want a car, say another $10,000 is down. You want to just... you. We don't operate on credit. We operate on cash. So liquidity is very important. And this is why I mentioned earlier that you'll need a constant flow of income because cash is king. Unless I see the money, I cannot do it for you. And because you're a foreigner most of the time, you'll have to pay most of these things upfront because people do not necessarily know you and it will take time to develop that kind of trust. Finally, guys, this is a bonus point, but it frustrates many people and we can address it in another video, paperwork. You need relevant paperwork. It's not as expensive. It costs about $1,000 for foreigners, but you need to think around it and you need to know that it's an expense that you're going to incur. Right now, there's also the Ghana card that has come on top of it. So if you're planning to move to Ghana or you are thinking that you could live here, there's so many dynamics that you have to bear in mind. Two years ago, when I was relocating to Ghana, these are things that nobody told me. But also, I did not ask the right people. So when I was relocating, I was talking to Ghanaians. But Ghanaians will only talk to you from a Ghanaian point of view. They will not necessarily um, explain these things from a diasporan point of view. So what's normal to them might not necessarily be normal to you. They're used to paying rent every year or every two years. To you, it might be a shocker, but you cannot afford to get shocked because then it leaves a huge dent on your budget. Thank you very much. That's all I had for you in this video. We'll continue with this series guiding you on how to move to Africa. What are some of the things that you need? We're doing a crack on it, but let me know if there's any other African country that you would like me to touch on. I worked as a journalist. I had the privilege of traveling through very, very many African countries. So I have experience living in some of these places and interacting and knowing how 
things work. I also have my YouTube channel where I interview people who've relocated to Ghana, sort of real time stories on relocating back to the continent. And I, 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 well, we'll attach the link in the description box. Show me some love there. Go watch stories, real time stories. These are just tips, but you need to hear also of how people have done it, the mistakes they've done, some of the things they've learned and what they think they got right. Thank you very much. My name is Andira Okanda. Until next time, ciao, ciao.